Hello and welcome back for another implant plan review. Uh, today we've been submitted a case uh, from a friend who wanted to evaluate uh, location tooth number 29 or missing number 29 for implant uh, placement. Uh, so I thought I'd take a closer look at this. And uh, so, you know, again, the first things that I always look at is going to be, um, you know, where is... Where are the um, vital structures? What does everything look like here? Um, you know, so, some of those things. So, um, uh, and then I'm also asked the question, um, what type of guide are we gonna use? And, uh, you know, I'm gonna not be specific about what type of guide, but uh, more of a digital or analog workflow. And what I look at is I see, um, uh, a tooth here that cannot be used, 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 and a tooth here that can't be used. But I do see teeth right here that can be used to integrate my CEREC data in for this situation. So with that being said, this would be a digital workflow. And the digital workflow is predicated on being able to successfully and accurately implement uh, or integrate the CEREC data into your cone beam data. You know, the next thing I would look at is, um, the next thing I would look at is um, whether this is going to be an OptiGuide, DigiGuide, or CEREC guide. And that honestly is going to be dependent on the overall um, difficulty of the case. So in other words, if it's in close proximity to vital structures or minimal amount of bone where I need absolute accuracy, I'm always going to opt for OptiGuide in that situation. In situations where I have more than a couple of millimeters of, um, of grace, then in that situation I'll, I'll always choose a CEREC guide for that. Uh, the other thing I would like to do in this particular thing here is go ahead and just kind of uh, give you some uh, pointers about um, you know drawing our um, CEREC data a little bit better. And the reason I like to do that is I believe that the better our CEREC data is here, um, the more accurate our implant plan will be. Because after all, we're doing prosthetically driven implant planning. So in looking at this, um, one of the things that I can see is it's unlikely that our margin would go that low on this. So I would probably, you know, if I were to redraw this, I would probably draw my margin more along that level here instead of all of this excess that you have down in this area here. So I would do that. The other thing that I look at here is when I look at the occlusal parts of the teeth here, you know, what I'm seeing is something more along, sorry, my mouse, I'm not so good with my mouse today, something like this. It's unlikely that this part of the tooth here will actually be that high in the final um, restoration. So, you know, when I'm working here, I like to have everything as close to ideal as possible. Now on to our implant plan that was submitted here. So here this uh, particular person is using a CAMLOG guided implant 3.8 by 9 millimeters in length. That is the shortest implant they make and not quite uh, the thinnest implant uh, that they have. Uh, but uh, here we can see. So, you know, my concern in this particular situation is uh, twofold. One is ultimately is a proximity of the implant to the nerve. And I think oftentimes, sometimes we can be, um, you know, over, um, you know, too, too, uh, too, too progressive with, because we're doing guided surgery. And here, what I'm seeing is we're approximately 1.7 millimeters. <sighs> Excuse me, 1.7 millimeters from the nerve, 
And then what I'm looking at here is, you know, the bigger issue is, is I look at the drills have about typically one millimeter of extra length. And then we look at the guide have potential or likely inaccuracies. So my question is, is between that one millimeter of extra length that we have in our drilling on the spade end of our drill, and then the likely that there's going to be some inaccuracies in our guide itself, uh, I personally um, wouldn't be as comfortable with this implant placement being this close to the nerve. Now, one option here is I'm seeing that our bone ridge is probably more along that height. So with that being said, one option is to move the implant up and now suddenly we go from 1.7 millimeters of space to about 2.2 millimeters of space, which is certainly much more um, tolerable in terms of uh, risk of damage, you know. Now, the next thing that I wanted to point out in this particular case is I'm having a hard time discerning the buckle plate. You know, does it go like that or does it actually look like it comes in like this? So if it does come in like this, the other thing that I'm looking at is the likelihood of needing to do some type of bone augmentation right here due to either threat exposure or thinness of the bone here and likely per, uh, future threat exposure. And for me, needing to do that augmentation also requires, you know, lifting a flap and then more than likely I'm going to need to lift my flap in this area right here and potentially, you know, create uh, some damage to this area. So again, not that it can't be done, not that it shouldn't be done, uh, but one of the things that I'm taking into consideration is the risk that this presents. And then as we take a look in the axial view, we can actually start to see here that uh, our implant right here in the axial view we can actually see that our bone does seem to come in quite a bit there and it does seem that our implant may actually be outside of the bone right in this this area here necessitating some potential grafting there or thin tissue so that, that's just some thoughts that I have on this particular case. And then the last thing that I would look at here or, or you know, um, critique is in the axial view, uh, I would say that our placement is leaving more room to the distal than to the mesial right there. So I would possibly look at um, maybe adjusting my plan as so and then um, that way the implant is a little bit more centered um, mesial distally in our tooth uh, like so. So, you know, just, just a few minor things and food for thought in terms of placement. And then um, so uh, not that the case can't be done or shouldn't be done, just some of the things that I'm looking at uh, when we have this type of technology. So I want to thank you, and uh, hopefully uh, we found uh, uh, this implant plan review um, helpful.